Hey everybody, Jared with Second Life Design. I am working on a, an oval chopping block tonight. Uh, I know for a lot of people, uh, getting started into woodworking, kind of a, one of the next entry level projects is getting into cutting boards, knife blocks, cheese boards, whatever, and inevitably you're, you wanna try and sell them. Try and put them on Etsy, local pages, craft shows, whatever. And that's, since there's so many people doing it, it's become kind of a, a bloated market. So I found that any way you can to separate yourself from the masses is gonna help, may help with the sale. So this is something that I would do or I have done to kind of improve your odds. Um, you know, there's a lot of square boards out there, a lot of rectangular ones, but I think going with an oval shape or a circular shape may, uh, may be a little bit different and that's what could be the difference between the sale or taking a bunch of stuff home. So just keep following along and I'll explain everything and as much detail as I can and we'll go from there okay so this is what I got um, this is the maple and cherry cutting board it's a long grain cutting board the maple came from a table base that somebody actually left me um, I rehabbed a table for them and it, the base was kind of chewed up so they didn't want it so I just kind of cut it apart and had some boards left over uh, the cherry had been left over from a shop project, I don't remember when, so I thought it'd be a good use of the material to put them into a cutting board. Uh, I always will try and glue up things long like this, it goes through the planer a little bit better, reduces your chances of snipe, and you know, previously what I, what I had done, what would have done would have been, you know, I had something like this, I would cut it right here, and then I would make, you know, this would be a little cheese board, and this can be your cutting board, they can be a match set, and they go out together. Um, I'm trying to differentiate myself a little bit more and that's where this idea of the oval came in so we, it's a longer rectangle like this and the trick is just getting that oval shape where you still have straight sides um, but you know each each end is totally round so I I've already kind of got a start on it I'll flip it over and you can kind of see what I'm talking about um, there is a little bit of forethought in this you got to do some a lot of checking before you actually do any cutting but it's a pretty straightforward process, and I think it'll, it'll probably help some people. And it can be used for different things. You know, this is a cutting board, but if you wanted to make a mirror frame or, I, you know, a lot of different things, you want to make oval. That's what, that's what this is all about, using a router. So um, let me get it flipped over, and we'll go from there. Okay, so this is what we got. This is how I started. Um, really, the basis of this is... You find the center line, you find the center dimension, you know, whatever this is. This is like 15 and 3 eighths, so, you know, 7 and 5 eighths is the, is the center of this. From wherever you want to end, you know, if you want this to be 24 inches total, or 22 inches, whatever, you have to measure in the same distance from here to the center, from the center out. So if this is 7 and 5 eighths, you need to measure 7 and 5 eighths from where the line's going to be to where your hole will be. And so that's, that's the biggest basis of this. It takes some layout and some forethought, but that's what you're really doing here. You want it to where, when you use a router compass, and I'll use that, I'll demonstrate that to cut the other side here. Uh, when you start that, you want to be able, where it's not touching on the sides, and it, as you just come in, it's starting to cut through. That is what's gonna give you that perfect look of the oval. So it, it's, you know, if you want to make, your, make life easier for yourself, you know, make this an easy dimension. Make this 15 inches, and it's, you know, seven and a half. But it's going to take some, some playing around with your router compass to get it the exact right dimension. You want it to not touch on the outside, just barely not touch. And then that's what will give you this, you know, the perfect, the arc here. And then it would be the same thing down here. If this were longer and you wanted a longer one, you just measure in the same distance. But it's the end length, you measure in the same distance to the outside. That's really it. And that's what's going to give you the, the perfect 180 degree cut that's the what i keep saying but that's really all it comes down to i will leave in so use the all use that got my other center hole i like using uh, the safety wire uh, for you know drawing circles like this it's a little bit more rigid so you don't have as much of a chance of things distorting but that's where you come the pencil line comes right out to the end that's how you can kind of lay this out to try things out. So that's what uh, that's really what it comes down to. I'll get the router compass set up here and make the other cut, and we'll go from there. But 
Um, you will have two holes here. That is, you know, the sacrifice you make. So there, this board wouldn't be two sided, but I like to use the rubber feet uh, for a couple reasons. It helps so the things don't stick as much. And then it also makes it so um, when, if the client ever uses it, they, or the board gets wet it can stay dry it's up off the counter it's not causing any problem i've had a couple of boards blow apart where uh, the client you know dried it let it sit flat on the counter and then the moisture couldn't escape and it just blew the board apart so that's where the rubber feet or for a bigger board like this is pretty handy so let me get the rider compass set up and we'll pick it back up okay i got the board turned around i got the compass set up on this end it might be a little bit easier to see and this is just a trim router really simple circle compass and I leave this in the same position. I only use, use this for cutting out circles. I use a quarter inch up cutting uh, spiral flute bit. That's what seems to work the best. It gets all the stuff cleared out of there the easiest. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and hog this out. If it is not dead nuts on, that's not a big deal. If it's off just a little bit, you can trim it in the table saw. Uh, you can do some sanding. So you can get it close, it doesn't have to be totally accurate. I'm not going to go all the way through, so I got it three quarters of the way through. I'll go over to the bandsaw, trim that off, and then use a flush trim bit to get it the rest of the way. It's going to, it can lessen my odds for a uh, tear out that way. But that's the biggest part of it. Let me do the cutting and we'll pick it back up. Okay, so here we are. We're back to our oval shape. And from here, we'll take it over the bandsaw, I'll clip these off. You could use a jigsaw, handsaw, whatever you have. Um, doesn't really matter. And we'll hit it up with a flush trim bit to bring it to full size. So let me do that real quick and we'll pick it back up. Okay, and that's that. Uh, from here, uh, you see, totally oval cutting board. What I'll do from here is give it a good sanding, get a, use a router bit to put my profile on it. You can use whatever bit you would like, round over, chamfer, thumbnail bit, router bit du jour, and give it a finish sanding and oil it. Uh, this ended up at 15 and 3 eighths by 24. Um, I like to go a little bit wider rather than deep for cutting boards. It gives you more room to fan out, let alone the counter depth is always 24 inches, give or take. So it doesn't, you know, you can't really go that far deep, but you can go really wide. People appreciate that. So I hope this helps. Obviously a lot of different applications where this could be used beyond just a cutting board, but uh, it's the most practical application I can think of right now. Uh, please hit the comment and subscribe buttons, uh, hit the like button. It's really helped me out a lot. If you have any other questions, hit me up on Instagram at Second Life Design. Uh, any other content you want to see, let me know, and we'll go from there. Thanks.